If approved by voters, most of the tax revenue from Proposition 30 will go to cash-strapped public schools, but opponents say it will come at a cost to small businesses. But before getting to the pros and cons, here's what's supposed to happen if the temporary sales and income tax passes in November. There will be a one-quarter cent per dollar sales tax increase through 2016. Income tax will increase for individuals earning $250,000 or more and for families earning more than $500,000 a year through the year 2018. Prop 30 is expected to raise $6 billion in state revenues annually for the next five years. Here with a perspective on each side of the issue is the chairman of San Diego Tax Fighters, Richard Ryder, and Murdisa Baxamusa from the Middle Class Taxpayers Association, San Diego. Murdisa, what will happen to school funding if this proposition doesn't pass? This is $6 billion in cuts. It's a serious money that just in San Diego Unified alone could translate into increased class sizes, teacher layoffs, and shorter school terms. So it's very serious for schools. Richard, now we know budget cuts, as he was saying, have devastated public schools here in California. If we don't get the sales tax, how are we going to prevent that in the future? Well, one of the problems is that they're spending the money now uh, trying to force us into supporting a tax increase. Basically, they're holding our kids hostage. They didn't tell the districts to control their spending now. They're just assuming that a tax increase is going to pass when the last eight such tax increases have failed in the state of California. This is an extremely dangerous and I find very cavalier policy about the future of our kids. What other way can you um, protect the schools or get money from the schools besides raising taxes? You prioritize your spending. We have the highest cost uh, per per prisoner in the, in the nation. We have the highest rate of incarceration in the nation. We have made no effort to control our pen, uh, runaway pensions, health care costs. We are not doing any of the reforms that are necessary to bring California spending under control. And what this policy will do is to continue on without reforms. Murdisa, what do you think about that? Do you think that taxes are a legitimate way to help our schools? Well, I strongly feel that we need to invest in education. We have one of the lowest per capita spending in the nation amongst all states. So we need, to, we owe it to our children to invest in their education. The Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association calls Prop 30 an excuse to raise taxes. They say it will not provide more monies to schools. Have you heard that argument and what's your response? I think that this creates a lockbox. Governor Jerry Brown has committed to making sure there's a constitutional lockbox that protects this money from general fund from the legislature into education and public safety only, as it is your month, in this ballot measure. So therefore, there is a certain amount of guarantees built into this ballot measure for protecting education and public safety. And Richard, opponents to Prop 30 also say that this tax increase would directly impact small businesses. They say that it could, you know, cause them to leave our state. Uh, do you think that's true? I think it will cause both small and large businesses to leave our state. We have the highest corporate income tax rate west of the Mississippi, which is where our economic competitors are. We have the highest business failure rate, small business failure rate in the nation at 69 percent above the national average uh, with the current high tax policy. If this policy is passed, then high, weight, high earners in this state will pay 21% more than the second highest state, 34% more than the third highest state, which is Oregon, and a heck of a lot more than the rest. People won't leave a country for tax reasons, but they will leave a state. People are mobile in that regard. We're already having an outflow. We need to stem that outflow. We need, the, we need wealthy people in California. Even if we don't like them, we need their revenue. Do you think there is a direct link between Prop 30 and these small business owners? Yes, a lot of small business owners do, are, are not incorporated or they're pass-through corporations, so they pay the full tax on what they earn as personal income tax. And that means they pay not only the federal income tax, but they'll be paying the California income tax, which for top earners is going to be 13.3 percent, including full tax on capital gains, people making Facebook profits, as an example. You're going to see a lot more mo mobility to Texas, Nevada, Washington, and other states which have zero income tax, I, you, and I can assure you that all the states have far less income tax. Murdoza, do you agree, do you think that people have to choose between a business economy in their city and education? California is a state of entrepreneurship and innovation. We have one of the highest business startups in the nation. People come to California flourish because of our education and our quality of life. Our UC system and CSU system need to be invested in to make sure that the future entrepreneurship spirit stays within California, that we're competitive globally. So that's why this investment is important. All right, Marissa, Richard Ryder, thank you both so much for talking with me today. Thank you.